Take first question, Mark here in the second row. Steph, Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Um, uh, Kyle Lowry jumped into the crowd last night. One of the uh, minority owners from the Warriors shoved him. I don't know if you're familiar with the video, but just wondering about your reaction to what happened, how the Warriors uh, are, you know, how their Warriors image might be affected by the incident uh, and this one minority owner. Uh, obviously, an unfortunate situation all the way around. Credit Kyle the way he handled it. Um, you know, a lot of different reactions you could have had, um, but he handled it correctly. Uh, I know our team and organization is is um, addressing the you know the situation and will act accordingly. Um, you don't want to see that in our game, and and hopefully it doesn't happen. Uh, I, I don't necessarily think it was a reflection of how we handle you know business here you know, as a Warriors organization and franchise. We we had, you know, have a high standard and, and do things with class and professionalism. Um, and I know Mark is apologetic and and whatnot, but we'll handle that situation on the front. Like I said, the organization is going to do that and and just want respect for the game all the way around, fans, owners, team, you know, players, coaches, everybody, because uh, there's so, so much good happening on the court that we want to keep the spotlight on that. Tim, towards the back. Steph, Tim Reynolds with the AP. Here in the middle, the um, Danny Green, when he gets on roles, they tend to last for a while. And unfortunately, I guess for you guys, he's sort of he's he's in a good place right now, a good rhythm right now. What do you guys have to do better against him? Uh, obviously, he made shots, and he's been in this in this in the stage before. You know, back in San Antonio, and knows sense of urgency of the moment and, and those big spots. Last night, he had a lot of just momentum threes, whether it's end of, end of quarters or you know, us making a run, getting it to seven, six, and, you know, him making a shot. So watching the film, there are a couple of broken plays that he got, a, you know, a three off of. But early in the first quarter, I gave up a three to him or a get, let him get open for a three in the corner without really making him, you know, feel my presence at all. And shots like that for a great shooter just build confidence, and he fed off of that the rest of the game. So if I'm nitpicking, I'm saying – Early in the in in the first quarter, you know, try to run him off the line, make him think a little bit, uh, and maybe that hopefully will will carry over the rest of the game. But the exact opposite happens, so uh, our defense as a whole has to be better. Joe, second row. Hey, Steph. Joe Varden from the Athletic, right here. Um, do you know Mark Stevens? Not personally, no. And our phones, yours too, are just blowing up with react very strong reactions to this. Um, what did you make of it? I mean, wh how do you feel about this? I mean, that a, a minority I, I owner. Just, that... I just answered it. Well, no, I mean, but you, you said so. it's an unfortunate situation, but I mean, yeah. you personally, like, how did, how did you take that in this morning when you were looking looking at the film and, and finding out exactly who it was? I didn't see it in real time, so I didn't know exactly what happened. I saw Kyle's reaction, but obviously when you see the video, it's pretty you know clear who was in the wrong. Um, and... Again, we'll, we'll, I know the team is handling it, you know, the way that they should, in terms of uh, not letting him back in the in the in, in the stadium for the finals, and then whatever happens after that. So again, I just credit Kyle the way he handled it because it could have been uh, a lot worse in terms of an altercation that should not have happened in, in the beginning. So uh, it's kind of who Kyle is in terms of you know protecting himself, but doing it in a graceful way for sure. Second round, right? Um, hi, Steph. This is uh, Shigang from Titan Sports China. So yesterday, the audience audiences were doing everything, helping you guys on the floor. And tomorrow might be possibly the second last game of uh, Barrios in, in, in this area. Does that give you extra encouragement? Being down 2-1 gives us all the motivation we need, uh, honestly. Uh, there is a bigger story around this building and, you know, it being the last year and and what's at stake with that, but it all kind of boils down to us, you know, trying to win a championship no matter, you know, where we're playing at. And being down 2-1, we have to come in, feed off our crowd's energy, um, make the necessary adjustments, um, on, especially on the defensive end that we didn't do in game three, and allow our crowd to 
be in it the entire game. Um, you know, that's it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, we've got a lot of situ uh I'd say the, the cards are stacked against us in terms of, you know, injuries and things like that. But, you know, that's a sob story nobody really wants to hear. It's about how can you get the job done, and we got to go got to go do it. Nick on the left over here. Steph, Nick Friedel, ESPN. Steve just told us that Kevin wasn't going to play tomorrow. Are you guys at a point where you have to prepare as if he's not coming back in this series? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, just knowing he's trying to get back as soon as possible and, and there's certain checkpoints he has to go through. The way that we've handled it to date is, you know, what's the focus today? Is you know, who's who's able to play, who's not, and and how are we gonna go out there and, and give our best effort. So knowing he's not playing game four, um, we know what our rotations are gonna be, everybody lock in and and go win that game. And then when we get on the plane to go to Toronto, Ask the same question, and you know, we uh, hope at some point he will be back. And and when he does, we'll like we've, like we said, we'll be able to transition. You know, our perspective, uh, you know, with, with him available. But until then, it's just on a daily. You know, the moment is who who's that, who's out there, who's ready to play, and can we go win? miss lots of things without him. What do you think you miss most in this time you haven't had him? Uh, everything. <laughs> He's an all-world athlete uh, who makes your team better. So it's a, it's a tough blow, but uh, we still have a great opportunity in front of us. And we're going we're gonna to lay it all out there on the line to try to get it done. Eric on the right. Steph, Eric Corrin from The Athletic. Uh, thinking back to last night and then watching the video today, how much do you think the Raptors' defensive focus on you really changed from games one and two uh, with Clay being out, of course? Uh, there's nothing janky about yesterday. Let's put it that way. It was, uh, I mean, they, they showed bodies. They threw you know different guys at me. I was just a little bit more aggressive, you know, trying to look for shots. But I assume there's going to be subtle adjustments, you know, trying to get the ball out of my hands earlier in the possession. But there are things that I can do to, to counteract that and still, you know, make an impact on that end of the floor. Looking at the film, I'd say we created pretty good offense all the way around. We just missed, you know, some shots. And like I said, that, that's ha that happens in the NBA. It's a make or miss league, like everybody says. But I think the composure that we play with and try to keep things simple. Um, at times we were, we were a little rushed, but for the most part, I like the way that we, we played offensively. Um, and I don't think that's going to be an issue for us to win. So it's all about our defense. Did it, did it feel at all like they were selling out a little more to – you know, get the ball off your hands, or was that not really a feeling as you went through that game? I mean, I got a 31 shot, so <laughs> it's uh, it was a lot just being aggressive. Now, again, no matter what defense is throwing at you, there are things that I can do to still, again, make plays. And at the end of the day, you I, you shoot shots, you can you you know you can you you can make and and live with the results. So uh, no matter what adjustments they make, I still feel confident. Last two questions over here, and Janie. Uh, Steph, Jeff Ferrado, Barry News Group. Um, Draymond often, uh, after a, a tough game where he doesn't think he played well, or he doesn't think the team played well, will take a lot of a lot of responsibility for it. And he did it again last night. When he does that, do you guys just say, "Well, that's Draymond being Draymond," or do you do you guys get motivation from that? And and do you think it helps him for the next game to motivate himself? Motivate himself? That's definitely an M.O. of his, but I think, honestly, any great player who is a great leader and, and doesn't mind, you know, putting themselves out there, they're going to – we all going to, you know, say what we could have done better. Uh, even myself last night, I'm nitpicking things that uh, – or, or possessions that I wanted back or – uh, looking forward to adjustments that I can personally make going into game four. No, I play, I play well, but I, I can play better. And everybody has that mentality. So, um, 
he's very consistent in terms of, you know, looking in the mirror and saying what, you know, yeah, when I play well, I know people are going to talk great about me. When I don't, um, doesn't waver my com his confidence, but he's going to go out, you know, next game and 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 self correct. So, uh, as a great leader, that's that's definitely important uh, to have that perspective as a point as opposed to just you know blaming other people or or uh, you know pointing the finger elsewhere. And when he does that, do you set a barometer of how he might respond the next game? I mean, honestly, I I know even if he didn't say nothing, I know just having been around him for the last seven, eight years that he probably lost some sleep based on, you know, our whole team's performance. So, and just the fact that we lost, like it's not a good feeling for anybody, especially a competitor like that. So whether he vocalizes it or not, I know, I know what, what his mindset is and, and would bet on him for game four. Janie, last question. Steph, Janie McCauley from AP. Um, with, with Clay coming back, Steve, Steve said um, he will be back probably tomorrow night. Um, defensively, how much is that a, a big factor for you guys? And also, Steve said he would not have forgiven himself if Clay had, you know, had further damage to that hamstring by, by playing last night. I mean, yeah, it's a tricky situation because it is the finals, and I know Clay was, you know, dying and begging to play. Uh, and I've, been in that situation as well where you feel like you can give the team something even if it's not 100% and you're not really thinking about the ramifications of a, a even more serious injury in that moment because we just want to play. Uh, but that's what a coach's job is. That's what a medical staff, you know, his job is, is to to make those tough decisions and tough calls and, and live with them based on all the information present. And they made that decision uh, to sit him. Hopefully he's that much better coming into game four. Won't have to worry about, you know, compensating for his, his hamstring or anything. To your question about his defense, I mean, uh, that's uh, – people fall in love with the shooting and, and how hot he can get on the offensive end. But the way that our team plays defensively and then the chemistry that we have and the experience, he's – right at the forefront of that and it's a tough adjustment when like I said guys who haven't been in that position consistently and in these type of moments are thrown into the, you know to his minutes so uh, you love to have him out there on that end of the floor as well especially with a team like Toronto who can who's versatile and can space the floor but he can guard a lot of different guys and kind of straight up too so um, we'd like to have that back and uh, I know he's he's going to be ready to play and, and have you know a lot of energy out there. Thank you, Steph. Draymond will be right up.